Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. I'm, I'm falling down the, the slippery, slippery slope of buying and reviewing old Mega Sets. All thanks to that Gungoose. That Gungoose. Oh, it started me on this path. And then Multiversal Productions reminded me that this set was a thing. And thus my, my slippery slope... Uh, has begun because I'm I'm continuing to try and find sets from this era. Today we have the Grunt Goblin Battle Suit. Now this set is oddly rare for some reason. There was only like five listings on eBay. Paid more for it than I wanted to. Kicking myself because I saw it in Ross for like ten dollars years ago. <clears throat> but we all have stories like that. But yeah, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Once again, the wonderful orange Mega Constructs logo. So yeah, without any further ado, let's go ahead and look at this box. So the really cool thing about this set is this rocket launcher. Well, okay, I, that's just the part that I'm kind of paying the most attention to is the rocket launcher, and I'll explain why in a second. Some of you already know, but we got our Spartan trying to jump over the massive blamite needles that are flying at him. We have our little grunt here. Don't know who's piloting the goblin, but the goblin is in motion, it's cracking the ground. It looks like a massive, well, grunt. It's it's just a big grunt with a, a needler arm. Um, 218 pieces. We got our operator there. I love that armor. Operator up there with our grunt. And there's our operator again. Um, I'm in the process of trying to get all the operators to do a comparison. I am currently stuck on Fireteam Shadow. At least of the time of the recording of this video, Shadow is ridiculous ridiculously expensive, so it's kind of difficult. Around the back, we get to see how the goblin opens up. This piece is super cool. And here's where you can see why I was excited about the rocket launcher. We have an actual plume of smoke, which is super cool. Pretty straightforward. We have the original banished banshee down there. So I say we go ahead and crack this thing open. So this is another one of those boxes that doesn't open easily because mega boxes did not use to open easily because they put like 50 gallons of glue in here. Oh, I'm breaking the box. It's all glue. All the entire front is just glue. What the heck? Guys, we don't need this much glue. It's just a mega set. Okay, I think I'm going to need a knife. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe this will help. Just gonna. I more and more appreciate Mega's updated boxes. I didn't have this much trouble with the gun goose. Okay, I should not do that with a knife in my hand. Oh my! Wow, that was stupidly hard. I'm gonna just dump all that out, and we are going to take this box and yeet it because i do not want to deal with that box right now that was ridiculous okay instructions look like the box pretty much but that's fantastic art i love that so we have unnumbered bags of parts uh there's our figure there's other of the special pieces just random parts joints and stands so yeah so one two three four five bags total all unnumbered and instructions. So I'm going to build this. This will have been built live. So if you want to see that, I will put the card up in the corner. And yeah, we'll come back once this thing is all complete. And there we go. The set is all complete. It was actually a really interesting build. It took me about an hour, but that was because it was on the live stream and I was talking to chat a whole bunch. Um, I feel like if you were just to sit down and grind through, you could get it done in like 30 minutes or maybe less. A lot of interesting things, a few little weird fiddly things. So real quick, I don't even need to get in closer. We just have four extra pieces. We have an extra shot for the big needler. We have an extra big needle and two of these extra pegs. That's about it. So let's go ahead and look at the figures starting with that Spartan. So like I said before, this is a Spartan operator. This is one of the Halo 4 slash 5 Spartan operators. And the really interesting thing here, and the kind of the reason why I really remembered this set and wanted to get it, um, was this piece right here. This, ugh, 
This is one of Mega's flamethrower pieces, but just recolored in gray to be a smoke plume, which I think is super clever, absolutely fantastic idea. And I don't know why they never did it again. Like it's, it's awesome. They recolored this in blue. They recolored this in red. Well, there's, there is, I should say, red was the first, red and orange was the first. And there's, I think two shades of blue. And now there's this uh, kind of brownish clear. I think it's fantastic. I think that's a great idea. You also get this clear pole with a little rocket on the end. This rocket is actually from the Call of Duty line, interestingly enough. And then this rocket launcher is, of course, the Halo 5 version. Um, kind of has to be because the spanker mold, this one, this one doesn't have any way to plug anything in. So for that reason, I think this is a cool piece. I know not everybody likes the, the Halo 5 rocket launcher, but in this case, I think it's really good. The operator himself, I really like this armor. Uh, I think it's, I think it looks great. Um, this green is nice. It's actually the same green as the Halo Heroes Series 14 Master Chief, so you can pop and swap between the two. My only real complaint is the head, um, the helmet. Well, not the helmet itself. It's the visor. It's just a little messy, especially like around here. And there's actually a little bit of visor splatter coming off of the helmet, which is odd. The visor is actually supposed to wrap down. This side, it's close to being okay. This side is a little bit more rough. It's a very bright visor too, so it's pretty easy to see those imperfections, which that disappoints me a little bit. I've had, I, I thought I actually still had a second one of this figure, but um, I remembered I sold it off a while back. But yeah, that, that guy, his visor was a little sharper, so I was hoping to find him again for comparison. But yeah, that's, that's my only real complaint. There's so much molded detail into this figure. It's absolutely fantastic like the chest plate the legs the arms the lower arms it all looks really good mold wise um that visor print and also this sprue mark that's my only real complaint and the head can actually move a decent bit like articulation wise even with these bulky shoulders so that's kind of cool i really like this figure my only real complaint is that visor is just kind of choppy and I really would like it to be better. It's not the worst. It doesn't make the figure unusable. It, I just would have liked to see a sharper print. And of course, this would not be, a, well, it wouldn't be a grunt set without the grunt. So we have a blue, it's a very metallic-y blue uh, Halo 4 and 5 grunt. And this is this is the same type that has like the, the face with the little beady eyes and the, the teeth. Um, looks good. I'm kind of slowly amassing more and more of these Halo 4 and 5 grunts. Comes armed with a plasma pistol as usual. This arm seems to want to pop out a lot. Like as I turn it, it kind of loosens up and wants to come out. So I'm not really sure what's happening there. And then it wants to move. So that's weird. Um, that's something I'm pretty sure I can fix, but it's just, it's weird. Other than that, it's nice to get another one of these little guys. I like these guys. I, I know not everybody likes these grunt designs, but I like them. I think they're really funny, and I always like getting more colors of them. Now we get to the Goblin itself, and this is honestly pretty sizable. For size comparison, we have a prototype exosuit, and the Goblin kind of towers over the prototype. Like, I, I would put my money on a Goblin winning over the prototype, just, just saying. Um, here's our Spartan. I'm pretty sure that this is technically oversized because I'm pretty sure that it's supposed to be like Spartan is, that would be like Spartan size. But I don't know, I, it's mega, I think it's fine. There's big heavy duty joints so we can get a bunch of poses out of it all over. The bend on this arm is limited unless you like rotate a bit and have it shoot like that just because of the way the arm is built. The needler is really cool. We've got these big, these slightly rubbery um, needle pieces, and then there is a shooter down here. So let me see. If I shoot this off, I might never find it again, but... Oh, that wasn't actually that bad. There's not a huge amount of power behind that. So you get two shots for that, which is pretty cool. This hand is the one that lobs the plasma grenades. So you do have articulating fingers, 
and a thumb, but it can't really grab anything because of the launcher in the palm, which I didn't know that's what it was until I did a little research. That's terrifying. And apparently you can do homing grenades too. I don't, I don't know. Knees are a little bit limited. I feel like this piece here with the U should have been flipped around so that we would have been able to get a full bend, but we can splay the legs out a good bit, have it do the grunt waddle, you know, and you do get a decent amount of forward and back so you can have it walk and it's decently stable for how top heavy this thing looks. The feet are pretty big. As far as I know, these feet are exclusive. There's a spool piece back here. There's like this thruster unit. This is the launcher for the shard storm um, thing that it does. I love this energy shield piece. It's got raised detail. Uh, you can see the little eyeballs. Looks very much like a grunt. Like it's literally a giant grunt mech. Like that's what it is. You can hinge it open here. This hinge is rather loose for how heavy the front is, but it doesn't really mess things up too much. And then you can also do it like this. So you have a double hinge. Honestly, you don't really need to hinge that, but it is helpful to get it out of the way. There is a control panel in there and you can put the grunt inside, but it's rather difficult. You kind of have to like pinch his feet together and like cross his arms in front. Let's see, is this enough? And even then it's rather fiddly. It took me, I mean, you can see it if you want to watch the stream. Uh, it took me a, a little bit to actually get him in place. There we go. He just barely fits inside, just barely. So just be aware, um, you know, when you're putting the, the grunt in. But yeah, that's, that, I like it a lot. I like how poseable it is. The joints feel like it will hold it up. Like it doesn't feel like this guy's just gonna fall over. Waist rotation would be kind of cool, but I feel like that's asking a bit much for what this is. I mean, it's a grunt mech. How much posing, like, uh, there's only so much that you can ask for. The giant needler is terrifying. And honestly, if I had to fight a pair of hunters, bro, stand up, or this, I would choose the pair of hunters because would one needle super combine? Because that's how much blamite is in it. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, you saw it just fall over, but that wasn't a problem of the joints. That's just, again, the design. The feet can hold it up some poses, but you also have to remember that like they're only so big and this mech is rather top heavy. But yeah, for what it is, for the design, I'm impressed with how stable it is. It's not perfect, but no figure with posable joints is perfect in that way. I like this. I like this a lot. Well, there you have it. That is the Grunt Goblin Battle Suit. This is a really cool little set. I really like it, but I do not like it for $55. That is way too much. What people are asking for online feels way, it's just way too much. Like, yeah, it, it is way too much. Also, what I just realized is that extra needle that I was showing you, that's not actually extra. There we go. Um, it, yeah, it wasn't actually extra. Anyway, really good Spartan. I do wish that visor print was better. The Grunt Goblin is built really well. The joints feel good. I don't know how well they'll age, but they feel good. Um, it just looks really nice. The grunt does fit. It's a pain, but it, he does fit. That rocket effect, oh, that's so cool. I love that. Really, really, really good. I don't know why Mega didn't use it again. So overall, if I were rating this set out of 10, which maybe I should start doing, I don't know, make that a more regular thing. But if I were to give this a rating out of 10, I would give it an eight. Well, no, 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 I would give it a nine. I think I would give it a 10 if there was a little bit of terrain, just a little bit of terrain, something for the Spartan to stand on, give him the high ground against the, the grunt suit. Um, I do feel like this is kind of the grunt's revenge because the last older set I reviewed was the Gungoose Rampage, which I'll pop the little card in the corner if you want to see that. But basically that was two Spartans, a Gungoose and a rocket launcher versus one grunt and a shade turret. Super unfair. Now we have one Spartan. Yes, he has a rocket launcher, but look at this thing. It has giant needler. It has the plasma grenade lobbing hand, and it has the shard storm launcher on the top. He's really outmatched here. So this is kind of the, the grunt's revenge. So anyway, that's kind of the, the baseline. It's a really good set, but for $50, 
or almost 60 in, in my case, it's it hurts. That's not a good price. And I would say if you can find it for less, go for it. Like 40 or less, even 40 hurts, but 40 or less, anything higher than 40, I feel like is too much and not worth it. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.